Um, I wanted to start off the session with a very small joke. Uh, why was the PepsiCo data engineer excited about using grid expectations with Airflow? Because with these tools, they could chip away at any data quality issues they have. Oh, uh, yes. With that, with that response, uh, better hope I'm good at data. Um, so I'll start off talking a bit about myself, uh, a bit about uh, my company and the context in which we use Airflow. Uh, I'll uh, also discuss some data quality challenges that we faced and how we use Airflow with great, ex great expectations to solve those, those challenges. Um, so uh, a little bit about me. My name is Russell Lamb. Uh, my role is, uh, as, as you nailed it, uh, retail data engineer uh, in PepsiCo's e-commerce division. And our mission, uh, my team's mission, is to deliver retailer data to drive value for, for e-commerce. And I say drive value because our, our philosophy is really uh, inspired by the lean software development methodology, where we, want, we, we seek to eliminate waste. Um, and I'll talk more about what, what we consider e-commerce a bit later. Um, where I am, I'm based in New York. My team is global. We're, we're in Asia, Europe, uh, all over the USA. Uh, my favorite PepsiCo products are SodaStream and Cool Ranch Doritos. And um, you know, fun fact, in some countries, it's called Cool American Doritos, which uh, didn't, you know, I guess, you know, I just thought that was fun. Um, why do I love Airflow? I love that it's flexible, scalable, and extensible. I, it, as we've seen in a lot of the talks today and yesterday, how flexible Airflow can be. Um, and, and, and scalable, um, I'll talk in the next slide, just the scale at which PepsiCo operates, why that's important. Uh, right now, you know, e-commerce is a relatively small part of PepsiCo. It's only been around about six, seven years. Um, but with the amount of you know, products and, 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 and scale, um, I, you know, we, we need to make good choices about, um, about technology. And uh, extensible, we'll, we'll see um, you know, as I talk more about things like um, our custom data vault plugin that we've built in-house and great expectations, how these all fit together with, with Airflow. Um, a bit about Pep PepsiCo, so uh, it's, a, it's an iconic brand with 100 years of history. Um, our products are enjoyed all over the world, including here at the Airflow Summit, which is awesome. Um, you know, we, we're, our, people enjoy our products over a billion times daily. I don't know how they, how they got that number, but that's, that's some number I got. And um, you know, we have great initiatives like uh, Pet Positive, which is about sustainability, uh, renewable ag agriculture, uh, sustainable value chain. It's a great, great, great um, initiative. Um, and you know, so just like taking a look at some of the, the, the brands that might be familiar here to you on, on, the, on the screen, and you get a sense of the stakes here, right? Why data quality is important, why you know, we need at PepsiCo to be really thoughtful about um, our data quality. And um, you know, just a little bit more about like what, how we define e-commerce and such. So th there are three main channels that our consumers get our products. Retail, like if you go to a grocery store or a convenience store, you buy the product, our products there and you take it home to, to consume there. Um, food service uh, is like if you go to a restaurant or a sporting venue, you buy you know, some drinks or, or some chips and you uh, consume those products on site. And then e-commerce is whenever our customers buy products, on you know, via a digital platform like a web app or, an, or, or a, on your phone uh, to have delivered to your home or to go pick up in a store. Um, and you know, the, 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 that last channel right, is unlocked a, a huge amount of data that was previously not available um, to, to us uh, you know, via, via those other channels. Um, you know, data is moving more quickly and more numerous, and, but we can use that data to help inform those other businesses, the retail and the food service side. And so we chose Airflow to help us manage all this data. Uh, we've got over 800 active production Airflow pipelines. Uh, we are uh, self-hosted Airflow on managed Kubernetes. Um, the, the, one of the reasons is because we are multi-cloud. We, we are, operate on both AWS and Azure, um, mainly because there are, uh, you know, one reason is that that's where our customers are and data providers. Uh, and so it, it can be easier to set up data sharing with them uh, if we're on the same cloud. And um, also we have some agreements with, with providers of, of data as to where we can and can't host their data. So um, that's why we need to be multi-cloud and we 
uh, leverage the, the self-hosted, uh, you know, the, the, the managed Kubernetes on both those services to um, make our, our, our Airflow instances portable. And we have a dedicated um, data platform team in-house um, to, to help with all that. They, they have expertise in cloud infrastructure and, and Kubernetes. Uh, and I, you know, I work really closely with them. They're, um, you know, re re really, really helpful. And um, my, my team uh, specifically works with 50, over 50 unique data sources, whether they are customers or third party providers. Uh, many provi they have many different data types like sales or marketing or inventory data and different formats, um, APIs, file drops, et cetera. Um, we are, uh, our Airflow instances are multi-team. Um, there were some great talks about you know, multi-tenant. We're not quite at that level, uh, but we, you know, we, we are uh, like, the, the other teams that I share my Airflow instance with are all within e-commerce. Uh, and we tag our Airflow jobs by team and we all share our code in a mono repo. And that helps to drive awareness of uh, what, what teams are doing, leverage, um, common you know, operators or, 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 or common uh, code that, that we can uh, reuse. And um, we do decentralized development, kind of, it, it, it's almost like a natural or informal data mesh, the way that, that, that it, it came to be. Because uh, we have data engineering teams aligned to different domains that own those domains and that data. Um, and uh, they, it, we, we use Data Vault uh, as our warehousing methodology and, and a uh, in-house developed data, uh, data Vault plugin for Airflow that um, makes it easy for, for us to, to create those, uh, these uh, shared data hubs and, and entities. Uh, for example, like product, we, we might, you know, my team might share the product entity with a supply chain team, for example. Um, and the way we manage this is we have collaborative governance. So um, kind of like a data council where there are representatives from different teams who go in and you know, whenever there's new, new entities created, we, we can say, oh, you know, maybe we can repurpose a different, pro uh, a different entity or a different table rather than creating a new one um, because we shared those data models. And having that, that collaborative data vault uh, framework and monorepo, it makes it easier for us to, to, to join data between domains and, and, and reuse those data models. Um, here's a snapshot of our, of our platform. Um, you can see, I, I don't know if the numbers come out clearly, but um, sort of all the way on the, on the left side, there's, there's the number one, that's where all of our data is coming in from. Uh, we're, on, you know, we're pulling data from Azure Blobs, AWS S3 buckets, uh, downloading files off the internet, scraping websites and APIs, et cetera. Uh, once Airflow senses that data, it passes it on to um, you know, the, the, you can see the first dotted rectangle here. Uh, and one of the first boxes there by the number two is um, great expectations where we do data validation. And um, you know, if the data matches what we expect it to, like it has the right number of columns, uh, everything's spelled the right way, or the, the, the values are you know, what they should be. Um, you know, we have a number of data checks uh, built into Great Expectations. Um, you know, then, then it will proceed. If it does not, then we notify our, our data operations team immediately so that they can resolve any data issues. Um, and, uh, and so once, once the, the data passes that validation checkpoint, uh, we do some data cleansing, uh, and many times in Python, uh, and then we get to the, the Airflow Data Vault plugin stage where the data uh, lands in our, our Snowflake um, Data Vault uh, there by the number three. Um, one, that, that's sort of the, the, uh, the, the handover point to a lot of downstream processes. And, uh, but the, there's more. Um, and the, the second dotted rectangle here there's more, tra uh, uh, more transformations that we do via DBT and, and Airflow um, to do like aggregations and apply business logic, do transformation. Um, a lot of that logic is centralized in DBT uh, and then ultimately lands over here at number five in our, what we call Infomart, um, which is like a star schema uh, data warehouse for our business intelligence applications. And then underneath of all that um, labeled the number six is our data observability platform. Um, there was a great talk by Monte Carlo just in the other room, uh, and we, we use Monte Carlo as our data observability platform. Um, we, we define a number of, um, you know, like for, th th there's a bunch of checks out of the box for freshness and size. We write custom checks as well in, uh, in SQL, 
And if there's the, the, the platform constantly monitors our data warehouse and our data at rest to see, you know, okay, if there's an anomaly, then it, it sends out an alert, similar to, you know, uh, that or where the exclamation point is for the data validation step. Um, and so then beyond, below all this, on the, ladder, the, the bottom half of the page, you see a lot of the downstream applications, um, for example, like machine learning and AI, um, software applications and BI. Um, but that's, um, that, 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 that's essentially our, our platform. Um, and some of the quality challenges that we've encountered, um, because a lot of our data is second and third party, right? Our, our customers are providing us with how, many, how much sales they did, for example. Um, we need, you know, we don't have a lot of control over the shape of the data. And so we're constantly monitoring for consistency, right? If the, if the data comes through and it's not what we expect it to be, it'll break our pipelines. Um, data, bad data is hard to remove. Uh, I don't know if you've encountered this, um, but if you get some bad data in your warehouse, you've got to write something to get it out. Uh, it requires changes to production. Uh, we, we've got checks in place to make sure that, you know, people don't just go in and willy nilly change production. And then once you've written all this, you know, put all this effort in to get the data out, you throw that all that all that hard work away. So it's essentially wasted effort. So we want to you know, eliminate that waste. Uh, and then we, we, we need documentation for data. So um, you know, with all the, the different uh, you know, pipelines that we have, uh, how, how do we ensure or how do we know what to expect for each pipeline? Um, and, and we need a way to capture that you know, in, in, in that business context in our documentation. And then finally, errors happen, right? Sometimes there's missing data, sometimes there's duplicates, et cetera. These are some, these are all the, the, uh, some of the top challenges that we face with data quality. Um, and our solution to that is to use great expectations. Uh, we've, we've been using it um, since around July, 2020. Um, we've got currently over 300 um, expectation suites that, that are you know, checking the, the pipelines in our, uh, you know, in our airflow. Uh, and when something va fails validation, we, we, we fail the, the, the pipeline. Uh, so it's a fairly early step in the pipeline to, to do that great expectation check. We wrote some custom code for our great expectations operator for, uh, for cloud storage and for our, our database checks. Um, we also wrote some, some action classes for Slack and, and the great expectation data docs, the, the way that you render the, the great expectation results. Um, uh, mainly because we wanted more options. Uh, for example, we have multiple teams using uh, Airflow, as I mentioned. So in order to route to different Slack channels, you know, we, 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 customize, we wrote some custom code for that. Uh, we also needed to handle it authentication, um, especially on Azure, uh, something that we, we just implemented. Um, and, and, but you, you don't necessarily have to do that, right? So if you want to use great expectations, there are lots of options that are out of the box or open source. For example, the Great Expectations Operator by Astronomer, um, you know, they, they, they've open sourced that. Um, there, there's webhooks for Slack that you can use for notifications. And you know, as I mentioned, the data docs are, are out of the box. We, you, know, uh, you could use that. So what, what is Great Expectations? It's, it's a Python library, it's a validation framework, and it's, and it's open source. Uh, there are some components, uh, a couple different components to it. It's got this uh, like a, a, a web app, what they call data docs, that um, will render the results of, of a validation check. Um, and, uh, and there's also a validation engine that, that applies whatever checks you, you wrote. Um, here on the right-hand side is like an example, uh, a, a real example of, a, of an expectation suite. Um, you know, it's, it's written in JSON. You know, you've got like, um, you can find a column, you can find the context for each check. Uh, it, it, it's, it's effectively like a living documentation, which I'll get to in, in, a, in a minute. Um, and then you've got you know, notifications via webhook, as, as I mentioned. And so it integrates with Airflow. Um, we use it as a, in a validation step in a, in a pipeline. Um, there are open source operators, as I mentioned, and um, you, you, you're effectively writing JSON um, and you can link to the docs from you know in, in your airflow log, so we, we do that. We we have links that you know in our airflow logs. When something uh, you know fails validation, we can click on the link and see okay, where did things go wrong and great expectations. And so you know all, all of this um, 
comes down to a three-tiered approach we have to data quality. Uh, for inbound data, uh, I mentioned great expectations. It's kind of the, the gatekeeper to keep bad data out of our, our ecosystem. Uh, it gives us alerts early on in the process, and it documents uh, what good data should look like. Uh, DBT, uh, you know, we, we use DBT core, so that's the open source part. Um, it, it's kind of it kind of like sets up checkpoints along the way. So as data is being transformed, it's validating. You, know, you can set up tests within within DBT. It also centralizes a lot of our SQL transformation logic, and uh, it, it it's effectively documentation of all the fields and tables that are inside of it. And then lastly, as I mentioned, our data. Uh, Data observability layer is Monte Carlo. I didn't want to use their logo because you know they're they're not open source. Uh, I didn't know if I could do that, um, but they they effectively um, check up on the data at rest and and let us know if there's any anomalies of data that that has landed in our warehouse. And they ensure freshness uh, and the size are appropriate. They integrate well with DBT and and other tools, uh, and and all of these systems are effectively living documentation. Um, and so, you know, again, coming down to why is data quality important? Uh, one is building confidence in data. Uh, you know, we're, we're making a lot of important decisions off of this data, and you know, we need to make sure that we're, that, that we're doing it right. It, it could potentially affect our customers and our financials. Um, efficiency also. So, you know, if we can reduce the amount of time that we spend on old stuff, maintaining, you know, um, like, like, like I mentioned, ripping data, like bad data out of production, that, that's time we can spend on new stuff and developing new capabilities that add value. Um, and living documentation, with all, as I mentioned, with all the different providers and sources and files and pipelines, um, we, we need some starting point for if, if you know, uh, some data engineer wraps up their work and they're onto something else, uh, somebody else can, can step in and, uh, and troubleshoot or, or, or maintain the code that they've, that they've built. And um, you know, with, with with great expectations, with DBT, the the, the the effectively the tests that you build and the transformations of the logic that, that you build is constantly changing with with your needs and 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 the pipeline. Uh, so you can build off the, the the efforts of your peers, and you eliminate that that key person risk of like someone's on vacation, nobody knows how to fix this pipeline, right? Um, and so, yeah, like I, like I mentioned, the benefits of great expectation, um, you get to document those, ex th those assumptions that you have, reduce your key person risk. Um, if you are not familiar with a pipeline, it's a starting point to, you know, to, to give clarity on, on the, the, the subject matter or the pipeline. Um, it gets stream uh, support going quickly, so you can find the reason for a failure quickly. Uh, you, you can you know, access the, the, the data doc links on Slack or, or in the airflow logs, as I mentioned. You keep bad data out of your warehouse and your ecosystem, and, uh, and you don't waste your time trying to like, manually get that bad data out. Um, and so you know, th this is just a, a very simple example of like something that actually happened kind of the week before. Um, you know, I came out here, uh, you know, our, our, one of our analysts got a, got a Slack alert, you know, um, three expectations failed on this pipeline. They were able to just click the link that was in Slack. It took them to this um, web page that I, the, the words aren't very visible, probably to the folks in the back, but it shows like the column names that, it, that, that uh, we should have in any order. Um, and, you know, these values need to be unique and it has like an, an error. Okay, this, pro, this column was not, was not there. Uh, you could also see the, you know, th this JSON is from the, the airflow logs. Um, you know, it, it's like, okay, we see all these columns, but this is missing. Uh, so it, it's, it's really easy to, you know, to get to that point of like, we know what the problem is. Let's start to, to resolve it. Um, and so that's kind of what the, the validation lifecycle looks like, right? So you know, your, our, our data comes in, um, you know, we've, we've had set up all of our, our expectations here in, in grid expectations. Grid expectations applies those rules to the data. Um, the data gets um, rendered in, in, in the JSON and the Airflow logs or HTML in the, um, the web app. Uh, and then, you know, something failed, someone, someone can resolve it and notify the data owner. And then they can go in and they can re-update those expectations so that, you know, the, you know so that it, it, it's up to date. That, that documentation, those expectations are maintained. And uh, it's not a separate process that someone needs to look at um, you know, separate from, from the code. Uh, so that's, that's really it. Um, does anybody have questions? I, uh, 
I like the presentation. Thank you. Uh, one question I had was at PepsiCo, how did you guys get around with some of the limitations with great expectations when it comes to transfer of knowledge and OOP and getting buy-in from data scientists and analysts to use the platform? Because inherently it is overcomplicated at parts and it's difficult to get that transition going. So I'm curious on how you guys did that as a team. Yeah, I mean, one, one thing we did <clears throat> is we, we, we built our own operator to make it easier. Um, and, uh, data scientists aren't, um, you know, we don't have a lot of data science, scientists that are actively using Airflow at this, at this time. You know, most of it is done by our data engineering team. But um, the, the expectations are, are also kind of handled by those data operations folks that would be the ones troubleshooting the, you know, any notifications that come out. So, so we've got a team of folks that are, who's responsible for you know, managing those, 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 uh, those Slack channels for alerts. Um, they're helping to write the expectations, you know, giving feedback to update the expectations. And, um, and, and plus, plus the, the, you know, the ease of having an operator where it's just, you know, you, you, you configure it. Uh, effectively, we have like a mapping table of, okay, for this pipeline, these, you know, use this YAML configuration to, to do the checks. So it's like pretty, um, you know, like we've built a good infrastructure to make it easy to use. So even if we had data scientists, you know, or, or someone who is not as, uh, you know, uh, pr proficient in airflow, you know, it should be pretty easy to set up. So, you know, that's, that's some of the, the benefits of writing those, those operators. Thanks. Uh, just one more follow-up question. Um, you mentioned your customers and that you use it as an inbound platform to validate data. I think one of the problems we have with it is that let's say your SLA has changed or you have incoming data that you want to, that one of the components that it has is profilers. But one of the issues we had with it is that it's a static platform and there's no concept of dynamic profiling where new data can be checked and then update to profile. How did you guys, did you guys uh, think about that? Was that a problem for you? Or, and if it was, how did you kind of go around that? Uh, yeah, that, that's a good point, right? It, it's um, we have not automated the profiling component of it, right? So, so that um, that feedback loop of like, okay, bad data came in, we got notified. That is a manual process to then go and update the, the expectations. Um, and you know, sometimes it requires a dialogue with whoever gave you the data, right? Is this what we expect the data to be next time, uh, right? Like, let's say we, we got a file and the you know the column name changed, right? It broke our pipeline, it broke our validation. Um, do we should we change the expectation to 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 suit the the new file format, or is the next file going to be you know the same as the you know the, the what we expected before? So then you know I, I think having that manual intervention allows that that dialogue and that give and take to to take place. Um, but yeah, I, I I think that that's you know that that's kind of the next level is to be able to automatically profile the data and update those expectations dynamically. But I think then you would need to update your, your pipelines as well in, in, in a lot of those cases. Uh, hi, I noticed you're just using great expectations for your inputs. Uh, is there any reason why you're not checking your outputs with it or does Monte Carlo just take care of everything you need? Well, I, I think that a lot of the, um, like DBT does some of the validation, Monte Carlo does, does some of the validation. Um, we have talked about validating with great expectations in other places beyond just the being the gatekeeper, um, but yeah, that, that's a that's a good point. You know, that, that this is this is how we've currently set up great expectations. But um, you know, I don't I don't know if that's uh, you know how, how we're going to how it's going to stay or if there's uh, you know an impetus to, to do it differently. Also, Russell, thank you very much for a great presentation. I'm sure. Yes. Uh,